I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but North Carolina has been building a lot of highways in recent years. There's seemingly a new interstate corridor popping up every few years in the state. It's to the point where even Texas might be getting a little envious. I-42, I-885, I-840, 73, 74, etc, etc. On this video, we'll be going through a brief history of North Carolina's interstate highway plans, what exists currently, what's under construction now, and what's being planned for the future. The list is extensive and this is going to be a good one. So hit that like button as we get started. Subscribe if you love it. As we begin to explore North Carolina's massive freeway expansion. We're going to start out by going from west to east. So first up is the unnamed potential spur from Waynesville towards Murphy. Currently this route is US 74 and a significant portion of it is already at freeway level, though some portions might not quite be up to interstate standard. It is known as the Great Smoky Mountains Expressway and serves as a lifeline for some of North Carolina's most isolated towns. It is part of Corridor K, designated in 1965 by the U.S. Congress as part of what was called the Appalachian Development Highway System, or ADHS. This system of highways was meant to bring development to the historically isolated Appalachian Mountain region, and as of 2019, a study found that approximately $54 billion worth of economic gains have been brought to the area due to this system of highways. There are a few segments with grade crossings that prevent it from being a full freeway through its entire length, and the overall expressway portion ends just outside the Natahala Gorge area, where it then drops down to a two-lane, beautiful, scenic route. After this area, the road then becomes four lanes again into Mer Murphy, and Corridor K continues on to North Carolina 28 to bypass the Nantahala and is a standard four lane divided highway for a short length before dropping back down to two lanes. It is listed in the NCDOT's plans to be upgraded to four lanes between Stacoa and Robbinsville, though not as a freeway. I don't see this one getting upgraded to a freeway beyond the current point outside of the Nantahala, nor the grade crossings on the current expressway being upgraded anytime soon. So this highway will likely not be joining the interstate highway system. Either way, it doesn't appear to be a high priority at the moment, so this one is a long ways off, if ever. Next up is one of my favorites and one of the ones I'd like to see the most. That is the interstate corridor from Asheville through Charlotte and to Wilmington, North Carolina. Much of this route is already built and some planned and or under construction as we speak. I-26 and US-74 are already freeways from Asheville to Shelby. However, US-74 might need some shoulder upgrades before meeting interstate standards. In Shelby, US-74 is currently a four-lane highway with lots of traffic lights and great crossing. But North Carolina is currently in the process of building a northern bypass to connect to the freeway section of 74 on the eastern side of Shelby. Once complete, it is assumed that North Carolina will realign US 74 to take the bypass, thus completing the full freeway between I-26 and I-85. At I-85, the route would have to multiplex with I-85 heading into Charlotte as there is no way the current US 74 would ever become an interstate. Things will get a little interesting in the Charlotte area. Currently, Charlotte lacks a true east-west freeway but it does have a sort of piecemeal one utilizing I-85, the Brookshire Freeway, and Independence Boulevard. The Brookshire currently ends right before 85 and I doubt North Carolina will modify this interchange for the current signalized design. Independence Boulevard is a freeway for a short distance east of Uptown Charlotte, then is reduced to an expressway with plenty of side driveways and traffic lights en route to I-485. So for the Charlotte area, it looks like the highway would have to be routed with I-485 around the city. East of Charlotte through Union County, a toll expressway has been built. While this is a wonderful highway, it cannot be added to the interstate highway system as a toll road. After the Monroe Expressway, US 74 becomes a four lane divider highway with plenty of traffic lights, occasionally losing its median when entering the towns in the area. Currently, North Carolina has a plan for a Waysboro bypass that would be a new freeway alignment bypassing these towns. Personally, I can't wait for this one, as Waysboro is probably my most hated town in North Carolina to drive through. Let's get that one done, NCDLT. Next, we get to Rockingham and start seeing I 74 and future I 74 signage. The highway from here to somewhere just west of Wilmington is slated to be signed as Inter Interstate 74. Supposedly, Interstate 74 is to turn south before reaching Wilmington and instead go to Myrtle Beach. But we all know that is not happening. So in essence, I-74 will make up the remainder of the Asheville to Wilmington Freeway, east of Rockingham. Continuing east, we now have one more thing to talk about in the Charlotte area. This is, 
or was, called the Garden Parkway. The Garden Parkway would parallel the existing I-85 west of Charlotte's airport and serve as a reliever to the very busy I-85, which is currently only six lanes through Gaston County. This one is proposed as a toll road, so it wouldn't actually be added to the interstate system. Last I heard on the Garden Parkway is that it has been shelved indefinitely. Then with North Carolina making plans to widen I-85 through the area, it appears that the Garden Parkway might be completely dead. Now let's take a hike on up to the Triad area of Winston-Salem and Greensboro. In the Triad, North Carolina has several proposed highways. First and foremost are I-74 and I-73. These highways are already partially completed in the area. Future plans call for I-74 to be extended north to the segment off Interstate 77 near Mount Airy. This will be accomplished by routing I-74 around the city on another proposed interstate known as the Winston-Salem Beltway. In Greensboro, I-73 is actually complete within the city. North of the suburban city of Summerfield, North Carolina is planning to extend the highway northbound to the Virginia state line by upgrading the current US-220 to interstate standards. Greensboro also has a recently completed beltway known as the Greensboro Urban Loop. With this final section complete, Greensboro has now joined Charlotte and Raleigh to become the third city with a complete beltway. Oh, but wait, there is more when it comes to the triad. There is also this spur interstate known as I-785. I-785 currently is routed along the northeast portion of the Greensboro Urban Loop, and future plans call for an extension along the current US-29 corridor up to the Danville Bypass at the Virginia State Line. Boy, when it is all said and done, the triad is going to be swimming in interstates. And just when you thought it was over, North Carolina has recently planned yet another future interstate for the Triad area. This one is known as Interstate 685 and will utilize the existing US 421 corridor to run from Greensboro to I-95 near Dunn. I-685 is the newest proposed interstate in North Carolina and its motivation for existing is rooted in Toyota planning to locate a new mega plant in the Triad area. Allegedly, Toyota desired direct access to an interstate highway and North Carolina didn't want to miss out on this business locating in the state. It was added into the 20 2021 infrastructure bill that is now law, but it doesn't end there. Wilmington wants the route to be extended and the existing US 421 corridor upgraded to become an extension of this proposed I-685. It also seems that it would be more useful if it ended at I-295 in Fayetteville rather than I-95 in Dunn, so as to create a direct link between Fayetteville and Greensboro. Quite silly in my opinion, as this corridor is very close to I-40 and currently only has an ADT of around 4,000 vehicles. While North Carolina loves building new interstates, I would be stunned if they agreed to Wilmington's request. Personally, this one seems like a waste as I-40, which it parallels, is rarely congested in eastern North Carolina. Next up is the wildly popular Raleigh-Durham aka Triangle area. Just recently, Durham received a new I-85 spur interstate known as I-885. I-885 replaced the southern section of the old Durham freeway and combined it with a new segment known as the East End Connector, which it uses to connect back to the parent Interstate 85 northeast of downtown. I just drove this segment recently and I must say it was quite a pleasure. But the big project currently underway in the Triangle is the completion of the Interstate 540 Loop. If you haven't noticed already, North Carolina wants to have beltways around all of its major cities. Raleigh is no exception. Though it already had the smaller I-440 Capital Beltway, I-540 is the wider loop more akin to I-540. 485 in Charlotte or 285 in Atlanta, the big boy type of beltway. Currently, I-540 exists as a mostly free roadway with the eastern segment being tolled and signed as NC-540 due to these tolls. However, construction is actively underway to complete the remainder of the beltway, which could be fully completed by 2030. The signature feature of this project is an impressive, unique interchange that will serve as the junction for I-540, I-40, and the current US-70 which itself is marked to become Interstate 42 in the future. This interchange is a turbine type, similar to the I-85, I-485 turbine in Charlotte, but with some modifications as it will serve three interstates intersecting within it rather than two. It remains to be seen where the North Carolina will re-sign I-540 as I-640 once the loop is fully completed but we shall see. The next highway in the Triangle area is quite popular among road enthusiasts. Though I'm personally not a fan of the routing nor the number, 
and that is Interstate 87. Interstate 87 is to be the interstate that connects Raleigh to Norfolk, Virginia. It is to give the growing Raleigh area a second mainline interstate highway as well as provide another route to the Hampton Roads area, which as it stands is at sort of an isolated dead end on the interstate highway system. North Carolina re-signed the US 64264 segment in Raleigh as Interstate 87, as well as adding I-87 to a portion of the Capitol Beltway. The US 64264 segment itself was previously signed as a short-lived Interstate 495 prior to the I-87 approval. After leaving Raleigh, I-87 is to follow the US 64 corridor to Rocky Mount, transfer to the US 17 corridor, in Williamston and head north towards Virginia. In Virginia, it is to continue following US 17 and possibly end somewhere around the I-64 VA 168 interchange in Chesapeake. US 64 is a freeway all the way to Williamston, though not up to interstate standards, and US 17 is a four-lane divided highway with some freeway segments between there and the Virginia state line. US 264 to Greenville has already been signed as a spur route I-587, which finally gives the growing city direct access to the interstate highway system. From the Virginia state line to Chesapeake, US 17 is a four-lane divided highway and runs parallel to the tolled Chesapeake Expressway. I have my doubts about whether or not Virginia would like to build a free interstate next to this toll facility, which would effectively kill the revenue that it currently generates. While North Carolina has been quite gung-ho on this highway, like I-73, I-74, and I-785, Virginia has made no progress on building its portion and has no plans in the foreseeable future for its construction. I'm not a fan of this number as it will likely never connect to the existing I-87 in New York. Also with this direction, it would have been better numbered as an east-west highway. Interstates 46 and 52 are available. As for the routing, it would have made more sense to just add capacity to I-95 and multiplex with that highway, then upgrade the US-58 corridor to Norfolk instead of this long, out of the way, meandering path through eastern North Carolina. I say this because US 64 and US 264 are already freeways with low traffic counts. So the upgrade to interstate standards seems wasteful when Charlotte and Raleigh are growing like gangbusters and the infrastructure can barely keep up as is. So it doesn't make much sense to overbuild perfectly capable rural highways. How many years have we been waiting for US 74 to be upgraded out to 485? But I digress. It's safe to say that this path was chosen for two reasons. One, North Carolina wants interstate access for these small eastern North Carolina towns in hopes of improving the declining economic prospects of the region. And two, they probably figured there's no way Virginia would upgrade US 58 to interstate standards. So by having the route mostly in North Carolina and doing most of the legwork, they likely figured it would be easier to get Virginia on board with the project. The next project is another two digit interstate which will originate in the Triangle area and that is Interstate 42. Interstate 42 is proposed to follow the existing US 70 corridor from I-40 out to North Carolina's second largest port city, Moorhead City. Along the way, it will pass through the cities of Goldsboro, Kinston, New Bern, and Havelock. Fun fact about Interstate 42 is that this was originally the proposed routing of I-40 east of Raleigh to the North Carolina coast before the Wilmington route was chosen instead. While former North Carolina Governor Jim Hunt was able to get US 64 and 264 upgraded to freeways through and near his native Wilson County, the US 70 corridor has been known as a slow stoplight riddle track from Raleigh to the coast. With the I-42 designation, things have finally been fast-tracked to upgrade this corridor. Currently, the Clayton Bypass and the Goldsboro Bypass are up to interstate standards and ready to be signed as I-42, as well as US-70 towards New Bern. North Carolina recently received federal approval to go ahead and sign these segments as I-42, though I don't believe they have been signed as of yet. The Kinston and Havelock Bypasses have yet to be worked out, along with the decision of how to resolve the not one, not two, but three forms of US-70 that exists near I-95 in Smithfield. The I-42 designation is solid and could potentially bring some economic benefit to this part of North Carolina, which has been struggling since the decline of big tobacco and the offshoring of the American textile industry to Asia. Though I can think of a certain popular plant that could replace some of the lost tobacco industry in this area whenever North Carolina politicians finally wake up. Also in Eastern North Carolina is the military town of Fayetteville and home of one of America's largest army bases, Fort Bragg. Fayetteville is another city where North Carolina wants a loop to be built around it. The loop here is known as I-295 and it is partially completed around the western side of the city. The loop is around halfway complete right now and provides a connection between Fort Bragg and I-95. Per the NCDLT website, the Fayetteville Outer Loop is critical for the region. It will help support the military, promote continued economic growth, and strengthen North Carolina's ability to attract 
and retain business and industry. NCDOT says it's slated for completion in 2026, and the full cost of the Beltway clocked in at around $1 billion. Next up is Interstate 795. I-795 currently runs between Goldsboro and Wilson and replaced the old US-117 route between those two cities. I actually remember growing up and watching this roadway being constructed back when you used to have to drive through the little towns of Pikeville and Fremont. Currently, there is a proposed extension of the route that would have it continue south along the current US-117 to an interchange with I-40 near Faison. North Carolina has now posted future I-795 signage along this route, but as of now, there is no estimated date for its completion. You will notice that Jacksonville is excluded from any proposed interstate highways, though it does have a freeway bypass, which is signed as North Carolina 24. Jacksonville, while home of the Camp Lejeune Marine Corps base, unfortunately is in an isolated location when it comes to highway corridors. I don't see NC-24 being upgraded nor added to the interstate highway system, nor US-17 being upgraded down to this area. So unfortunately, on the interstate front, J. Actionville will be left out of the action. So this brings us to our final section of North Carolina, the largest coastal city, Wilmington. Currently, the transcontinental I-40 ends in Wilmington, and a US-17 bypass route is signed as I-140 around the city. Wilmington in North Carolina once pitched to South Carolina the idea of extending I-20 to the city, but to no surprise, South Carolina declined to send beach traffic to North Carolina's coastal city over Myrtle Beach. Earlier in the video, I also mentioned that Wilmington wants North Carolina to extend the future I-685 on a pointless route to the city. So it's clear that Wilmington wants another interstate highway. However, the most likely possibility of an interstate for Wilmington is the future I-74. Currently, as legislated, I-74 is to take a bizarre turn before reaching Wilmington and head to Myrtle Beach instead. Though North Carolina has not officially stated as such, it is safe to say the likelihood of I-74 going to Myrtle Beach is about the same as I-20 going to Wilmington. Add in the fact that Wilmington recently lost its suburbs to the Myrtle Beach metro area, no North Carolina politician will green light an interstate helping people avoid Wilmington for Myrtle Beach. So in the coming decades, when North Carolina is finally almost done with building the I-74 corridor in the state, I fully expect to see I-74 replace the existing US-74 to the city, capping off the long-desired Asheville-Charlotte-Wilmington interstate. Now back to the original question posed by the video title, why is North Carolina building all of these interstate highways? It appears to be mainly driven by economic interests. The interstate highway system has proven to draw in and spur economic development along the corridors that it goes through. The most glaring evidence of this was the decision to build I-685 for Toyota. I can't say they're wrong for thinking this as North Carolina is absolutely booming when it comes to business and people are relocating there from other states in droves. Another reason could be overall mobility. When the interstate highway system was initially proposed, North Carolina was a much less populated, mostly rural state. As such, it had this paltry, bare bones layout of proposed interstate highways back when the feds were handing out cash for roads like candy. With the growth they're seeing today, it could be said that the NCDOT is in effect future-proofing the state to prepare for what its population is likely to be 20 to 30 years from now. And I can't say that's a bad idea either, as we've seen in another booming southern metro, what happens when your population explodes and you just don't do uh, anything. All right, there you have it, guys. North Carolina's quest to cover the state in interstate highways. What do you think of these corridors? Which ones should be prioritized? Which ones shouldn't? If you live in North Carolina, which routes do you most want to see completed? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you on the next trip coming soon to a town near you.